My name is Lisa Perrin Cosmo, and we're in Two Harbors, Minnesota. I am a mother, first of all, and an artist, close uh, runner-up. I've been pursuing my career all my life, I guess. I went to school for four years at, it used to be College of Associated Arts, and then it was College of Visual Arts. It no longer exists, but it was on Summit Avenue in St. Paul. So I had four years, and I have a BFA in illustration in fine arts. When my oldest son was little, I remember holding him in my arms and painting at the same time, you know, and, and he would stand at the easel or stand on my easel and he would, you know, walk around and, you know, paint too or something. But it's so nice to be doing something that I love. I feel very blessed. I decided to take a break when the kids were little and I put everything away. Didn't want to be tempted at all, but then when I turned 50, I decided I, that's when I had to kind of um, just focus mainly on my art, so that's what I've been doing. I've been mainly a painter, mainly a 2D, you know, but I love the opportunity to work three-dimensionally. I love surrealism. I would I still incorporate that quite a bit, along with realistic landscapes. During the pandemic, I was actually fortunate enough to work on a commission piece for the hospital, and it was a nice sunny lake scene I did and that was wonderful. It was like a three-piece panel, a triptych too, so it allowed me to keep it large enough but keep the size workable. But I wanted it to be really serene so that people can escape while they're sitting there because they're dealing with, I'm sure, heavy medical issues. My aunt and uncle that still live over there in Bayfield um, reached out to me and they said, look, there's this sculpture um, competition going on. And um, so it was pretty close to the deadline. So I just dropped everything and worked on that and, and got it in there on time. And it was chosen by the LaPointe's Arts Committee Board. There weren't many multiple concepts. I just fell in love with the idea that I had initially and, and went with that. I wasn't really sh entirely sure where the site was going to be. So <clears throat> the site was going to be, this was a rock basin seat. So that's what this was. This is what a proposal, how it would, would look with the rock. Right away I started making my three-dimensional mini piece and then <laughs> went on from there. It took me a weekend maybe to do the mock-up and stuff. Some things that, you know, we found out in the shop once it was up was the movement so we did a little bit of bracing and stuff and I think that worked out really nice. I didn't want to make it real obvious. This is what I had so I could kind of explain to people what it was about and stuff. It says, Gateway to Madeline Island. This is a very personal piece to me because I am a descendant of Princess Madeline and Michael Cadott her husband. I am also a member of the Red Cliff Band, Bayfield, Wisconsin. I have fond, many fond memories of trips to the island and still visit family members who live in Bayfield. Loving the imagery of Madeline's father's name, Chief White Crane, and discovering that the Crane clan were identified as founders of the Ojibwe villages on Madeline Island helped me create my piece. I also wanted to incorporate imagery essential to the island's history, fur trading, logging, winter, fishing, Native American heritage, flora, reptile, land, and animal. My thought is to have the white crane rising from the red earth and being the only winged animal represented in my sculpture. It's an outdoor piece that is almost entirely steel. It was manufactured locally uh, by North Shore Steel. It sits on a cement base. So the medallions go on the outside there and they have two medallions on each of the four-sided base now. It incorporates Ikwesewe's image, Princess Madeline's image, in the crane itself. I was always told by my family, you know, you're related to Princess Madeline. And then, you know, growing up, I thought, that's just kind of, I, I think, are they just telling me that, you know? And I didn't realize it was actually true until about, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago when I got a, some papers about it and I thought oh that's pretty special you know so to have this 
sculpture incorporated with my family's history is such a blessing and such an honor to represent the um, Native American community. This is probably my biggest, it is my biggest achievement. I always say probably because I'm thinking, did I forget something? <laughs> it's so important. Um, people that have been oppressed, I think, need to see a positive reinforcement of their history and things that have gone on in the past, the wrong or terrible things, you know, to all sorts of people. But I think it, it brings people hope that there's, we're learning to um, respect each other more. Very grateful for being able to do the island sculpture and hopefully it, it does expand on even more sculptures in the area that represent more Native American prominent leaders. There can't be enough uh, representation of uh, positive humanity. The 10 foot tall sculpture weighs 1.5 tons and is fabricated from half inch steel. Mm -hmm.